Hello and welcome to another edition of Sparky Help. This time we're going to be overloading Twin and Earth cables to the point of destruction. Hope you enjoy. Thank you for taking the time to click on this video. I have many years of experience and like to keep up to date with research and developments. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you wish to post. All I ask in return is for one minute of your time to like and share, or maybe even subscribe. Again, thank you and enjoy. So let's take a look what an overload is. Overload is excess of current flowing through the cables. Every circuit shall be designed so that a small overload of long duration is unlikely to occur. So that's the intention, that's what the BS7671 says, and we're going to look at three different cables of Twin and Earth, and this comes from BS7671. The 1.5, we're going to go from column 8, and that's 20 amps clipped direct. We've got a 2.5, 27 amps is clipped direct, is its current rating, and we also have a 6mm, and the 6mm when clipped direct can carry a total current of 47 amps. Now this is clipped direct, and as you can see there are other columns, but as you can see from the regulations from the top here, a cable should preferably not be installed in a location covered by thermal insulation. Well, insulation does exactly what it says on the tin, it holds heat in, so try and avoid it, otherwise you select from a different column, or apply factors to compensate for that. So what we're going to do then is we're going to run currents through it, and I've got a cable coming up now, and this has had 10 amps flowing through it, and the top one is the 1.5 is the temperature, and there's our 1.5, and there's our 2.5, and there's our 6 mil, and I've got a thermometer in both the 2.5s and the 1.5. Bizarrely, I don't know why I did it, but the top temperature to 22 degrees as it stands at the moment is the 1.5 cable, so the top temperature is the bottom cable and vice versa. And this has got 11 amps going through it, and you can see the temperature is gradually going up. It's within range of all the cables, and all these cables have been connected up, and they will be getting slightly warm, but not massively. Now, obviously, for intensive purposes, I'm going to speed this up, so let's increase this to 20 amps. So this is the current rating of the 1.5, and then up this current and there's roughly about 20 amps going through it and I like I say I'm speeding this up so you can actually see what's going on and you can see the temperature is gradually rising the idea of this is the heat will dissipate into the surrounding air when clipped direct and therefore allow it to carry more current so it's be gradually rise and rise and hopefully all these cables should be able to carry their current for an indefinite period now, as you can see, the temperature is gradually rising, so let's increase this now to 27 amps. So this is the 2.5. Remember, all these cables are carrying the current. So now we've got 2.5 running at capacity, and the 1.5 is now overloaded. In theory, it is 20 amps, 7 amps over. So you will see the top temperature now is going up and up. Uh, this is obviously not an exact science, because obviously I've just stuck a thermometer just inside the cable, but they will be getting warmer. And you can see they are gradually going up. And like I say, this is over a period of about three minutes or so that I did this. And it's just going to keep getting warmer. And obviously the 1.5 is in excess and it seems to be holding out so far. Just so you know, the temperatures have dropped slightly. That's because I had to adjust something. And the cables slightly cooled down. And obviously that's what you want cables to do. Cool down, not catch fire. So now we'll increase it for seven minutes on this occasion, up to 47 amps. So this is the rating of the top cable to 6 mil. And as you can see then, the temperature's now speeded up quite a bit now, so you can see what's going on. And you can see the temperature now, it really is motoring away. And the, the 1.5 look up to 59, 60 degrees, and continuing to rise, and it obviously will continue to rise. But like I say, this is over a period of seven minutes, and we're already up to 75, and that's not the conductor. The conductor will be a lot hotter than that. It's up to 80 odd degrees, and it's just going to keep rising. Hopefully what you'll get to your point, well, not hopefully, but what you should see in a bit, is I can actually just strip it away with my fingers. It's become that pliable. It's been on so long now, my meters have automatically shut off, so I'll just do that. And now I'm going to... For the sake of argument, well, let's up it to about 100 amps, so all cables are now overloaded. So we're up to 95 amps, there's 100 amps, thereabouts, and you will see it, it will start accelerating away. So all cables are now overloaded to the point now, and, it, and it's the entire length, it won't be one spot, it'll be the entire cable now, 
that starts to smoke. So I'm moving my instruments out the way because I don't want to melt them, basically. And as you can see, we're up to 200 degrees. And now I decided, right, I think I better take the thermometers out because I don't want to destroy them or cover them all in plastic. And you can see the smoke coming out. And there we've got one of the connectors, like the Wago type fittings. But it's obviously just not a Wago, but that's a 32 amp. And it's starting to melt as you would expect it to because you've got over 100 amps passing through it, or thereabouts, 100 amps. And you can see there's a 15 amp connector and there's not much left of the 32 amp and there's not much of the insulation left of any of it of the 1.5 remember none of this so there's your 15 amp strip connectors they seem to be holding out on this particular brand of one i don't know which brand it was um, but if you want to stop all of this then put a porcelain ones in obviously you don't want to get to this point full stop but you can see the cables now are pretty much destroyed the 1.5 has disappeared Current conductors are still intact, obviously. What actually gives way on all cables is the insulation. So you can see it's all starting to deteriorate. There's not much left of that connector now. And now the 2.5 is starting to go. Remember, this is over about seven minutes, all of this. So let's speed this up. Let's put 115 amps through and let's see what happens. So all the connectors that are in place are still working, but they may have melted just through. So you might have seen there are 32 amp connectors which go to the 6 mil. So it's still making connection and now the 2.5 is starting to disappear. As you can see, both cables now, the 1.5 has completely give up. There's nothing more to smoke off of that, but it is still working. It's not shorted out because I haven't moved it or touched it. The 2.5 is gradually disappearing away and you can see how molten it is. And at this point I decided, you know what, I should turn this off. I think we've seen enough. The 6mm, it will be starting to get pliable. And as you can see, there's not much left of it and it's obviously burnt away at the board that it was up against. So you could see why, uh, obviously, this is unbelievably dangerous and what you need to do is make sure you don't overload cables in the first place. Hopefully what you might be able to see on the end then the last thing you want to happen is for this to detect it. So it's very important that you do follow the current carrying capacity and put some sort of protection in. This is Sparky Help. I hope this has been enlightening. Thank you very much.